Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member. Thank you again for this hearing, putting together this hearing. You know, this morning uh, I had an opportunity to hear directly from a number of uh, very courageous uh, survivors, and many of them are, are here uh, in, the, in the audience uh, for this hearing right now. Mr. Engler, uh, in talking to them, uh, they feel very strongly that you have not listened uh, to them, and if you have listened to them, you certainly haven't heard what they have to say and the concerns that they've expressed. And so today, as their senator, I want to amplify their voices uh, and ask some of the questions uh, that they raised. First off, the, the Detroit News has reported that in the past 20 years, 20 years, at least 14 people, most of whom are or were MSU employees, were notified of Nasser's uh, behavior. So in, in the interest of time, I'm just going to ask some yes or no questions. If you'd answer yes or no, I'd appreciate it. First, yes or no, have you subjected any of these individuals to any disciplinary action? Uh, yes. Uh, the uh, immediate action that I took with regard to Dean Strample uh, was an indication of my assessment that his leadership as, chair, as the head of the, as dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, fell far short of appropriate performance standards. So you have one, just in time, when you have right. the one individual you took the disciplinary action, Mr. Strample. Well, I think uh, all of these uh, happened. I arrived in February of 18. So no, you, you, you haven't. That's fine. You, so no, no is the answer. Mr. Strample, I understand you called in, in February for a revocation of his tenure. That's correct. But that uh, did not happen. He is actually allowed to retire according uh, to his No, his, his tenure, that's correct. His... Uh, Retirement has separated him from the university, uh, and so he is no longer connected in any way with right. the university. So he was allowed to retire, and I re he received $175,000 as well as part of the severance, I understand. In that was the settlement that uh, we judged uh, as more uh, in the interest of the uh, university and the survivors to have him gone so, and separated versus a 10-year proceeding, which right, under right. administrative so, procedures could run more than a year and cost much more than $170,000. So that was uh, uh, that situation. Yes or no, beyond uh, Nasser and Strample, so none of, no, uh, no other person has been fired. And uh, there is an ongoing investigation. I would re uh, remind the senator uh, by the attorney general of the state of Michigan at the request of the board of trustees to see if anyone else uh, should be subject to sanctions. So all these individuals will be interviewed? I believe they have been. And that's done by the attorney general's office? That is correct. Yes or, uh, yes or no, do you believe uh, that there was a culture of enabling and covering up of the actions of a predator over 20 years at MSU? Well, I wasn't there until February of 2018, but when I arrived, I felt that there were weaknesses in procedures and protocols. I felt that uh, the shared governance model at the university didn't lead to specific accountability, and so I thought those weaknesses... So there were problems. I need to keep moving if I could, uh, President. Okay, but I will you, try to... If I can't answer the questions, if, uh, I'm not allowed, but... Well, that was a yes or no, and if you were not there, you think, yes, there were some issues. You, uh, you answered Well, there the are question. issues, for sure. So you, were, you answered it, yes. Do you believe there's a, a job uh, is to uh, instill trust? Oh, absolutely. I think trust, and trust is done by accountability and people accepting responsibility uh, for their roles, be that uh, as a, someone in charge of compliance uh, in a medical school or someone in charge of, uh, you know, assuring that uh, an investigation is done properly at the you police know, part, department. And I appreciate that. Uh, in addition to the uh, the, the uh, making sure there's accountability. It's also the people you put in place to instill trust. One thing that the survivors feel very strongly about, and I think many of us believe is, is true, is that you should bring outside perspective uh, into leadership. Fresh eyes are very important. Having national searches to bring in folks who are going to bring a different uh, uh, view on how things are happening in Michigan State is important. Uh, we uh, have seen uh, you have pledged or you pledged to do that for a national or for your athletic director, have a national search. That didn't happen. Uh, you hired somebody from within the university. You also hired a head of the Office for Civil Rights and, and Title IX, uh, someone who was actually assigned to defend uh, Michigan State University against sexual assault uh, lawsuits, uh, as opposed to being someone traditionally in many universities, someone who works with diversity and working with students and is really a defender and a champion for students as opposed to the university. 
So I, I think for what came out very clear to me is in addition to some of your hiring decisions that I mentioned briefly, your lack of empathy and respect to survivors, uh, especially for uh, uh, Kaylee Lawrence, which I think uh, Senator Blumenthal in your remaining time, we're gonna ask more questions about that. We also have a situation with uh, Rachel Denholler, who uh, you accused of receiving kickbacks for manipulating other survivors. Are you willing to apologize to her? Oh, I've already done so. Have you done that publicly, verbally? Yes, I have. So Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to enter uh, into the record a letter signed by over 120 survivors written to members of the MSU's Board of Trustees uh, into the committee record, if I may. I'd like to read a couple brief passages. Uh, first passage in this letter, signed by 120 survivors. We recognize that the greatest measure of an abusive culture is how survivors are viewed and whether perpetrators and enablers will be held accountable and that the environment in which they th thrive remediated. On all of these metrics, President Engler has only reinforced the culture of abuse at MSU. And now they go on to say, we are here to tell you that all the organizational changes and policy and procedure enhancements in the world mean nothing if there is not leadership that creates an environment where survivors feel safe to speak up. And it is our position that MSU cannot move forward and become an institution of integrity and safety until John Engler is no longer president and a new interim leader who will stand against the abusive culture is found. And Mr. Chairman, I just have one last question, and this is a question uh, that came from Jessica Smith, who I met with this morning, another one of the courageous uh, survivors. And she had one question for you, and I would like you to, to ask, especially after hearing excerpts from this letter from 120 survivors, and there's much more in that letter. Her question was, if your presence is so harmful to survivors, why should you keep your job? Would you answer that, please? Absolutely, be happy to. Uh, under my leadership, accountability is being instilled across the university. We're seeing the number of complaints uh, coming forward. People are being willing to bring complaints to the Office of uh, Institutional Equity, our Title IX Officer Investigation. We have fixed the problems in the medical clinic now by strengthening the protocols, strengthened the chaperone policy, strengthened uh, the billing and reporting procedures in the department, strengthened the evaluation of deans and, and key personnel themselves, arrived at a $500 million settlement to put some of the litigation behind, fully cooperated with all the investigations, and we are also starting a process to bring a new president in. You mentioned earlier appointments, you mentioned only two, but there is a national search underway for the head of the Thailand office. You neglected to mention that. The man is an interim there. The athletic director was somebody chosen from outside the athletic department. Yes, he was part of the university, but he was chosen with the strong support of your constituents in Michigan, constituents who include uh, not only the football and the basketball and the soccer and the golf coaches on the men's and the women's side, but alumni supporters and everybody who views that this man who has a legal degree and a master's degree from Northwestern University has a strong commitment to compliance is exactly the right person to come in and be strong as a leader of the department. And in having a national search, uh, we would have found an outsider just as I found an outsider of the department, but we could not do a better job. And he deserves your support and mine. So the national search uh, wasn't conducted. You said you will do one for this other individual. We it, hopefully it, I, do, I said it's being done, Senator. It is being done, yes. Uh, that is being done. And there is now a national search uh, for a permanent president. Yes, sir. My understanding, uh, you will not be part of that search, and if offered the position, I, you will not take it. Uh, I'm not a candidate, and I strongly support the board's decision to move forward. They're in the process of hiring the search firm and uh, piling the search committee. I would hope that they would have somebody very quickly. Then when that person arrives, that you'll give them your support. Very good. Thank you.